Apparently this is what northern Michigan looks like in April. <laughs> 10 inches of snow, we were supposed to get 14, so I guess it's still coming down. We should consider ourselves lucky that we only got 10 and not 14. I was out here, I actually just deleted an upload. And it was a sales video for this crossbow. I was going to, or I, I was shooting um, with four bolts, 25 volleys, make a hundred shots. And I learned a little bit about this and myself actually when I was making this video. You know, this thing um, makes me a little nervous when I use it just because it surpasses by pretty good margin the power of an average bow that I would sell. Um, and, and so, in all good conscience, I, I, would, I would worry, you know, if I was to sell this and it wasn't like an expert bow person um, that received it, because the potential for damage is great. This thing is a powerful, powerful weapon. And uh, the potential for, for damage, you know, self-injury is, is way up here compared to down here, you know, with like 45 pound flat bow. Um, the flat bows, paddle bows, um, the other bows I make, not an unknown quantity. I've made enough of them um, that I have good confidence in them, in their safety, their ability to be shot, you know, within um, safe, uh, safe parameters as far as draw length, what have you. Pretty safe to operate, you know, unless you were walking and, and you know, shoot something you shouldn't be shooting. This, however, at over 90 pounds, 30, over a 32 inch um, draw length, which gives it a mammoth power stroke, you know, in the crossbow world, a 28 inch power stroke, I just wouldn't feel comfortable selling it. And, and so there we are. Some lessons I've learned, if you want to make crossbow yourself, I do feel that this was a very good alternative to steel, just using Rawhide, deer rawhide. There's, there's three, three. Uh, what would you say? Thickness isn't here. You know it goes around, so it's three. Plenty strong. It has never shown any sign that it's gonna, to break. And in fact, it still stays round. So it's a pretty tough unit. The second one is, I do believe that. This thing especially should have a safety. And if you're wondering, there's many ways to do that. I like simple, and what I'm going to do is because this is an Osage orange pen, pretty sturdy, I can drill a hole through there. I'll mark the hole and then pull it up, drill it, and, and so I'm going to have a simple pen, one of those pens that has a straight straight line on one side, then it kind of curls around and it's got a couple little um, doinky bends in it so it locks, and then I'll just have a, a simple string that'll tie it to the triggering mechanism. So I'll just pop it in there. Um, when I'm drawing it, it's not going to bump against my body it'll be totally secure that pin will hold it in there when you're ready to shoot just pop it out and it'll just hang there and away you go the bolts I've shot this a lot and I have had my number of misfires zero zero misfires clip it on there and I actually if you can see this you probably can't but I put I did the um, grooving on here and then I put that that plate on there so the plate gives me a sure stop it's thin sure stop and so there's no guessing and I don't risk having the bolt going ab above the string zero misfires this is simple I have a nice little leather wrap here but actually there's a rubber band under here I know they didn't have rubber bands in the medieval period but it works nicely you can clip this out and that rubber band gives it a sure sign of confidence and I also did slightly groove this, so it's not going to slip. Once it's on there, that slight groove will keep it on. Uh, the wooden, the wooden fletching, this is over 900 grains, so that translates into over 10 grains per pound of bow. Um, I was going to use cedar, but I wound up just using balsa wood for the veins. And the grain runs fore and aft, but all I did to keep those from, you know, breaking... So I just smeared glue over it. And I wonder if they did the same thing with the wooden fletchings back in the day. Just, you know, smear some glue over them. It smooths them out. 
uh, when I flight shot it, I didn't have the glue on there, so they were a little rougher. So probably with that glue, I'd get a few more yards out of it. Who knows? But that glue in my 100-shot volleys, they held together. So apparently the glue soaked into the grain and kept them together. What else? I do not have a thick. Why didn't I do a thick string like normal crossbows? Well, with this B-50, I didn't have to. And keep in mind, 72 inches from knock to knock, it's a long bow. And the weight of the string itself can slow it down. And so I went with a bow, a long bow-like string. I did serve it. I've got a little mark here. It's a little off-center because that center mark for the string um, changes depending on how tight you brace it. And so that center mark just gives me an indication. I would just keep it level through there. And so I can with that simple mark if you're building a crossbow. Keep this thing straight in line when you put it over here, when you um, cock it, I guess. I, you know, when you're doing this with a bow that's like drawing it, I guess drawing the crossbow would be the correct term. I can keep this in line, keep everything flying straight. What else? Um, that's really about it. I don't need to tie you up any longer. It's snowing out here. I've got book work to do. I would say that this is more or less my end of the season video um, for my, my bow making. Of course, I'm still going to make um, some bows and I'm working on a couple just long bows. Not just, you know, just they're not crossbows, they're long bows. And I'll have those offered soon within the next week. But basically, um, my tenure for having videos every day, sometimes two a day. It's, it just can't happen because although I can't do trail work now, <laughs> I, I should be doing lawn work, yard work, but you know it's underneath the snow. A lot of book work, a lot of planning for the programs, working on the newsletter, working on the, the summer schedule, getting my employees wrangled in together, getting the nature center up and running. Probably a little more cleaning the pole barn. I, I did organize it. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. And I've enjoyed this season of bow making and the two crossbows I've made. Um, the other one, the Osage and Sinew, heavier bow. But where this one differs from that one is the power stroke. And the power stroke is the key to like how much punch you have. And just the extra length and not being able to use a lever to do it just, I feel, makes this one... Um, too much of a risk to release upon the, the public. And you may say, you know, that where are you going to get a long power stroke crossbow? You know, this is one of these things that I feel should be, if you're going to have one of these things, you should be able to make one of these things. And that sounds kind of um, harsh, but, you know, there was a period of time in my life when I didn't know how to make a bow. You learn. You can certainly get crossbows, you know, that aren't, that, that um, are made by other people and maybe not like as potentially dangerous as this one. Not steel, it's woods, no backing. Um, go that route. Or else just buy my book, learn the ways of a bow maker, and construct your own. What else does, needs to be said at this point? I don't know. I think that that is about it. Um, thank you for a great season. Sold a lot of bows, made a lot of videos, enjoyed myself, made a lot of friends. I'll still be around, but just not as much as I have been. And it does seem kind of odd, unless you're standing here holding this thing and shooting it. Um, suddenly I feel a lot lighter, you know, because this thing has been weighing on my mind. Yes, I would have loved to have gotten money for it, but, you know, in the back of my mind, it's been kind of freaking me out. It's like... I'm potentially selling something that's really going to injure somebody. And, and now that, like, I'm turning down the money for it, you know, big deal. I'll make some bows to make up for it. I don't need to lay in bed at night wondering if, like, the bow is going to explode because somebody braced it too far or else something's going to happen and they're going to accidentally release it and it's going to go right through another person because this thing shot through a half-inch plywood. With the heavy bolts, the speed in which it leaves, probably 160 feet per second. You know, that's my estimation between 160 and 175 feet per second. 
this is something that I wouldn't like to release upon um, the public. But it's going to look nice hanging on my wall. It kind of goes along. You might have seen that. But you know what? It's a personal thing. This is my crossbow. And so I marked it. And for once, I'm going to have a cool thing that's going to stay in my hands. That's all. John, over and out. Have a good one. And although snow is pretty, when it happens on April 4th, it's pretty frustrating. See how I turn that phrase? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.